don't watch one day on Netflix. This is what it'll do to you. Just spare yourself. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Daria and welcome or welcome back to my channel. And if you have been on any corner of the internet in the last two weeks, you have likely heard of a little show streaming on Netflix called One Day. And you may have also seen a lot of videos of people just absolutely breaking down, like dry heaving, sobbing over this show. And so I'm here today to explain to you why the heck that's happening. For anyone who's new to my channel, first of all, hey, how are you? Hope you stick around. But you should also know that one of the main things I do on my channel is analyze adaptations. I am constantly reading books and then looking at the adaptations that are based on them. And a lot of times, if there are multiple adaptations based on a single work, I will compare them and let you guys know which one is superior. And that is what I plan on doing today. I am going to walk you guys through the novel by David Nichols. Then I'm going to talk a bit about the movie from the 2000s that stars Jim Sturgis and Anne Hathaway. And then I'm going to round out talking about this newest adaptation and series on Netflix and let you guys know what I think is, you know, the superior version of this story. Is it the book? Is it the movie? Is it the show? Let me just start off right now and say it is damn sure not the book. One Day tells a story of two people, Emma Morley and Dexter Mayhew, who meet on the day of their graduation from university. And throughout the novel, we pick up with them every single year on the same day, July 15th. And at the center of the novel is, of course, this relationship that they build. And we watch how it grows, how it devolves and evolves over the span of about 20 years. It's a romance novel and a literary fiction novel all wrapped up into one. There are very recognizable romance tropes. For example, the there's only one bed trope shows up here, which I thought was absolutely hilarious. The novel deals with a lot of like real life darker topics such as grief, addiction, illness, and you know, what it means to grow up and how difficult and uncomfortable and painful that process can be. Sounds like a great premise, doesn't it? Unfortunately, however, the execution was not exactly what I wanted it to be. First, I want to start off by paying a compliment to David Nichols's writing style. There were many times that I wanted to put this book down, but I found that his sort of dry, you know, simple, you know, bare bones kind of writing style would draw me back in, his dark humor, I, I enjoyed it. However, you cannot read a book based on writing style alone. And the place where this book really lost me was due to its characters and because of that, the romance at the center. Dexter Mayhew is one of the most aggravating, annoying, frustrating, any other synonym that you could possibly think of or look up on thesaurus.com. He is all of those things and I thoroughly thoroughly did not enjoy being in his head. Dexter is incredibly self-centered to the point of being narcissistic and the problem is that this quality of his never really seems to improve or go away. Even towards the end of the novel, where spoiler alert, he and Emma get together. I mean, is it much of a spoiler? It's a romance. They're gonna get together. He still seems to have not really improved or matured in any single way. And because I disliked Dexter so much, it kind of made me dislike Emma for pining after him her whole life. I just kept sitting there thinking, what do you see in this man? He is not a good friend. He's not a good person. What does he bring to your life? What value does he bring to your life? From what I'm seeing, nothing. You know, earlier I described this book as being about a relationship between two people evolving over time and the two people also evolving and growing over time, but I'm gonna have to amend that. I don't think that that's what this book is about, honestly. This book is about a selfish, egotistical prick who, once he finally gets together with, you know, the supposed girl that he's always meant to be with, he improves only slightly and actually only becomes a halfway decent person when she dies. Sorry, was that a spoiler? <laughs> oh God, spoiler alert, um, Emma dies. That is why everybody on your For You page is crying about this book. 
um, one of the main characters dies. Like, really terribly and out of fucking nowhere. Let me explain to you just how jarring this is. So, for the majority of the novel, we go back and forth between Emma and Dexter at different points in their lives. Every single year we catch up to them and they are up to something new. One year Emma has become a teacher, in that same year Dexter is a famous TV presenter. A couple years later their friendship falls apart and then we catch up with them when they're finally reunited at a wedding, Dexter is having a baby, etc etc. It's only until they are in their 40s that the two of them actually work things out and life conspires to bring them together. But then they are only together and properly married for not even two years when Emma is in a tragic accident, she is hit by a careless driver and immediately dies. And then the next few chapters, the last few chapters of the novel, we're just watching Dexter sort of fall apart through his grief. Although, although, you know what, actually now that I say that, he doesn't really fall apart. Um, in fact, he gets into another relationship, like not even a year after Emma dies. And listen, I'm not trying to make any judgments for anyone out there who has had a spouse die. I'm not trying to put restraints on, you know, anyone's grieving process, anything like that, their healing journey. But as someone who is reading about this man, who was just so, I just, I cannot overstate how much this guy fucking sucked. He sucked so bad. He even sucked when he was in a relationship with Emma. And then to have him move on so quickly after her death. Oh, and get this, get this. The girl that he starts a relationship with after she dies is a girl who works at the restaurant, the shop that he runs. It's a girl who works there who he admits to flirting with constantly, even when Emma's alive. And then that's the girl that he has a relationship with, I think like a, only a year, not even maybe a year after her death. Pissed me the fuck off pissed me the fuck. I was like, oh, if I didn't hate Dexter Mayhew, <laughs> reading all those chapters upon chapters of him being the most egotistical, misogynistic fucking weirdo, oh, I hate him now. You best believe I hated him in those final chapters. But let me return to my original point. This book is not about two people growing in their individual journeys and finally being able to come together and have like this healthy thriving relationship that you know the audience has been rooting for since the very beginning. No, this book is about Dexter Mayhew's growth and how it's only after Emma's death that he becomes like, like I said, a halfway decent person and that is so offensive. I, I hate that and I feel like I've seen that trope happen so many times in romance movies and books, I think particularly ones written by men. Yeah, a lot of romance books written by men, like they tend to have the woman act as a kind of catalyst for the man's growth. Everything about the girl is about him. Everything about the relationship is about him, which is why I think this book only solidified that I, I do not want to read romance written by men. Absolutely not. I think the only good romance I've ever, <laughs> um, that's ever been written by a man was Percy Jackson and Annabeth Chase in the middle grade series Percy Jackson and the Olympians. That man is allowed to write a romance, no one else. So that's the novel and given how much I just absolutely obliterated it, you may think Daria, well then why, why are you talking about the movies? Why are you talking about the series? Like if they're based on a book that you hate so much, you're obviously gonna hate them. And here's the thing, I didn't hate them. I loved them. I adored them. I'm obsessed. First I want to go ahead and talk about the film adaptation of this novel, which actually came out in 2011. I know it, I said it was like from the 2000s, but it's not. This movie stars the internet's favorite actress, the internet's darling, Anne Hathaway. So of course it's going to score some points simply by having her as a main character. It also has Jim Sturgis, which I feel he's kind of like a sleeper British white boy fave. I have loved him for as long as I can remember ever since I first heard the soundtrack uh, to Across the Universe and I heard him cover something by the Beatles. Something inside me shifted when I heard that. And I have loved this movie for so long. This was actually the way that I was introduced to the one day story. I had never read the novel. I had just watched this film and I had adored this film for so long. That honestly sounds strange even to my ears because it wasn't until I read the novel that I realized just how similar 
the movie is. Which I know, you know, it's an adaptation, but a lot of times adaptations can take liberties, they can change around a lot of things. This film took dialogue straight off the page and slapped it into the movie. I cannot tell you just how accurate it was to the book. Now, of course, because the film is only an hour to two hours long, there were a lot of scenes that had to be skipped or otherwise altered to fit within that time frame. And when it comes to the storylines that were cut and altered, it was mostly Emma who was on the cutting board. That sounds really morbid, knowing what happens to her. <laughs> what I mean to say is that a lot of the storylines and plot lines that involved Emma outside of Dexter weren't really shown in the film. For example, she has this whole arc where she is, you know, working in this theater troupe that is putting on these like educational plays for youngsters. Then she becomes like a teacher and, you know, she ends up having like an affair with the principal while she's there and putting on all these plays. And it's like a significant chunk of her life. And I don't believe that that's shown in the film at all. And if it is, it is really, really cut down. So in many ways, I feel like the movie did kind of treat Emma in the same way that the novel did, i.e. her feelings, her story, her growth, and her struggles, all of it is kind of secondary to Dexter's. Now Jim Sturgis's version of Dexter is leaps and bounds so much more likable than the book version because, and I thought about this a lot, like why, why is this so? Because he does a lot of the same things and he says a lot of the same things. But I feel like the reason that I can identify with and root for Dexter in the movie is because I don't have to be inside of his mind like I was in the novel. And I sincerely believe that this has a significant impact on how you interpret a character. Because when you are living inside their mind like you are in a novel, you are privy to every single thought and impulse and reaction that they have. And Dexter's were awful. So being able to exist a little bit outside of Dexter makes him honestly a much more compelling and um, rootable character, does that make sense? It was much more easy to want to see good things happen to him and not just be pissed off by every little thing about him. There's one moment in particular that the movie omits which I was so happy about because I feel like this really proves my point of Dexter just kind of being the worst throughout the entire book. I mean let's just set aside the whole thing with him like getting with that um, worker of his that he was flirting with even when he was with Emma after she dies. Let's put that aside. There's a scene in which he is taking care of his infant daughter by himself. He is drinking heavily and he ends up calling an ex-girlfriend of his and he does this with the purpose of like wanting to meet up with her saying hey let's meet together let's get some drinks and when she rightfully tells him to fuck off and says you treated me terribly why would you think I would ever want to have anything to do with you now he kind of has like a negative reaction to her and is like oh I shouldn't have called her like sir I just hit my elbow sir what the hell what is wrong with you and that I think that was like a big moment when I read this book and I'm like oh this guy sucks like he, he, he sucked for a majority of the book but now he sucks so bad. It wasn't just that he called her while taking care of his daughter, it was that he was pissed at her when she rightfully called him out. He was also married at this point by the way, I should say that too. Um, insane, insane. Dexter from the novel is just a whole nother beast that neither the movie version and just skip a little bit ahead, the series version, they're nothing like him and thank god for that. I know a lot of people love this movie and I do too. I have such a nostalgic attachment to it. Every time I watch it I feel like warm inside and then I kind of die inside when I reach the end. But it's really Anne and Jim's chemistry that carries this movie through its lower moments. I must also say that one thing about this movie that I noticed after watching the series and watching this movie back is that it's very... Hollywoodified. What I mean by that is that there are some moments in the movie where things are made to be more melodramatic and you know climactic than they are in the book and like they are in the series and I think that the movie is a bit worse for it. I'm thinking particularly of the moment in which the two of them finally get together in Paris. They're in Emma's apartment and Dexter goes to kiss her and they basically have this back and forth because you know they slept with one another and Dexter wants to be with her and Emma's with someone else. And Emma's basically like, I can't do this. But then she walks into the other room, calls up her French boyfriend and is like, I can't do this. I don't want to be with you. We're not privy to that conversation. But she comes back out of the bathroom and is like, 
I broke up with him and they kiss and that is when they come together. It's it's not really this grand romantic thing like it was in the movie because in the movie Emma and Dexter meet up with her boyfriend at this cafe. Dexter is walking off and then Emma comes running through the streets of Paris calling his name and there's you know news the music swells and it's this big you know dramatic moment um and you know it's, it's cute but it's I think when you compare it to the same scene in the series I'm, I'm gonna get to the series soon I promise it just even though it is supposed to be this grand moment I don't think it has the same emotional impact that the same moment in the series has so now that I've, I'm bringing up the series so much, let's go ahead and move on to it. I'll be honest, I was not expecting to like this as much as I did. I was expecting for it to be as good as the movie, if not maybe a little bit worse. And instead what I got is a version of the story that completely blew both the book, very easily by the way, and the movie out of the water. And I really don't say that lightly, okay? I am very attached to my nostalgia movies from the 2000s and 2010s, but I cannot deny the excellence of this series. It was incredible. First of all, I have to say that the length of this series compared to the movie kind of gives it the edge because they were able to create a mini series that was about six and a half to seven hours long. And obviously they're able to fit in so much more detail, even going beyond the book at times. And when you have more time to sit with these characters, to learn more about their lives, to dive into their relationship even further, obviously you're gonna feel a more severe attachment to them and that's going to make the story have higher stakes for you. I think that this version gave us the most complex, well-rounded, and best version of Emma Morley that has existed thus far. And that comes down to both the script and Ambika Maud's performance. We get to see Emma struggle as a teacher. We get to see her, you know, having that affair with the principal and kind of be like, girl, like what the hell are you doing? We get to see her moments of like insecurity and where she sort of feels like she's stuck in life and allows herself to be stuck. We see her struggle so much with insecurity surrounding her writing. Like that is such a huge part of her character in this series and I loved that they showed that. I think that both the actors who played Emma and Dexter, they just had so much more material to work with. Ergo, they're able to really bring these characters to life in a way that I don't think Anne and Jim were able to in the movie. And my god, you guys, they gave some powerhouse performances. I'm thinking particularly of Leo Woodall. He blew this role out of the water. There are two scenes in particular that just absolutely gutted me. And one of them was when he was calling Emma at the train station and just the quiver in his voice, the, the cadence of what he was saying and the panic attack and breakdown that he had afterwards was just, I was, I was blown away. And the second moment that also got me was after Emma leaves him in the apartment at Paris, like, the eyes, man, this guy's eyes are so expressive. Like it was crazy watching him tear up and try to fight it and like clutch at his own neck. Like this guy is getting an Emmy, whether for this role or some other role, I don't know, but it's in his future, I know it. He bodied this role. And like I already mentioned, Ambika Maud's performance of Emma just feels so much more grounded. It feels like she's an equal player in this story, which is what needs to happen in a romance. But another thing that I feel like they got so right about her was like her snark and like her sort of judge judginess when it comes to everybody. Like she's very critical of everyone because she's so critical of herself, right? And I feel like they definitely got that. I feel like in the book it was there, but once again, it was like kind of this like annoying quirk that she had to piss off Dexter because she was always judging him and shit, as she should have, by the way. In the movie, it was, it was kind of there, but once again, like the story revolved mostly around Dexter in the movie and there also just wasn't enough time to like fully flesh you know, either character out, but especially Emma. She got kind of got like the brunt of it. But in this series, like, Emma Gamad, she just, she killed it. Like, I just absolutely loved it. And I think, I think what really solidified how much I loved her character was that scene in which her and Dexter are fighting and Dexter says, you're so judgmental. And I was like, yeah, she is. And I loved that. I loved that she had this flaw, that she was like a real fucking person who like did this kind of shitty thing. And I was like, I know that sounds crazy, but like, that's what makes a good character. That's what, that's what makes a person, 
you know? I also think that the mini series format just fits this story so well because it is an episodic kind of tale. We are picking up with these characters on a certain day every single year, so there's a lot to catch up on. You're kind of just like dropping yourself into the middle of their lives and trying to figure out, you know, where are they individually? Where are they with each other? The episode format like really helped that. You really did feel like you were just like peeking in on a glimpse of these people's lives in that this one moment and then stepping away again. You're kind of zooming in and out. And I feel like in the movie you couldn't really get that same sense of time moving and sort of like zooming in on these people's lives during this one instance and this one day. There were also so many improvements made to minor and side characters. I'm thinking particularly of Emma's friend Tilly. Now in the novel she is just this very annoying and tiresome joke of a character to be honest. Emma and Dexter don't really like her and they make fun of her a lot. But in the show she is such a warm and funny and supportive presence in Emma's life and just like in the existence of the show. I adored her and I'm so glad that they made that change to her character. She brought such like lightness and love to the series in those small moments where she was there. When it comes to the romance genre I find that more and more I'm reading and watching these very surface level, shallow, kind of like self-insert type stories where basically you have these like two people who are like not even really people. They're like cardboard cutouts of people. Like they're, they're a silhouette of a person. Kind of there, but not really. I feel like the story is just acting like, you know, like we used to us when we were playing dolls when you were young. Like you just want to make them kiss and that's it. Like there's no substance really. But One Day is kind of that rarer story where you have two people who are like individuals on their own who have you know weaknesses and flaws and insecurities and you get to see them you know struggle with that and grow over time and then you know grow into these people who are like meant to be together and, and you want them to be together because it's the right thing and the best thing for both of them individually and that is the best kind of love story. I want to know why do these people belong together? What is it that draws them together? And I feel like this series really does answer that question with Emma and Dexter. Like you know why they should be together, you know what they bring out in one another, and you know why this relationship is so important to the both of them. And that's why the ending hurts so much this time around. Like it broke me. <laughs> it, it broke me. And it only hurt that much because of how invested I was and how much I just I knew that they deserved to be together, that they had to be together. And that's why it was so frustrating because they deserved more time together. And I feel like that's a sentiment that I hear repeated a lot when people finish this show. Like, why couldn't they have just told one another before? Why couldn't they have just gotten together before? And I honestly, I have those same thoughts, but I also struggle with this other thought in my head, which is would they have stayed together? Would the relationship have been so significant and so enduring if they had gotten together like after uni or at any other point before when they did? Because I do kind of, you know, believe that, that things happen when they're meant to happen. And so when Emma and Dexter got together, that was kind of like when it was meant to happen, when they were both like ready for it to happen and ready to be in that relationship that was so significant to the both of them. But then there is that part of you is like they, they deserved more time. They did. And that's, that's, I don't know, I guess that's the tragedy of it. <sighs> now I've also noticed a lot of people comparing this series to normal people. So is One Day Netflix's version of normal people? I would say yes and no. I mean first of all I have to put it out there that One Day the novel came out like long before normal people so I I don't know if you could say that like one day is copying normal people per se, but they do have very similar like plot descriptions, you know? You have two people who, you know, have this like significant love for one another and you're watching that relationship over a span of years, you know, waiting for them to get together or get back together or whatever. So like there is that sort of bigger bones similarity, but I just feel like Emma and Dexter and Connell and Marianne are just so different both individually and like in their relationship. Like Emma and Marianne are not the same people. Connell and Dexter are without a doubt not the same people and, th and their dynamics together aren't the same. So I would say if anything that if you enjoy normal people you will enjoy this show because it kind of it gives you that same kind of feeling 
you know, like that same kind of bittersweet, achingly beautiful heartbreak that you feel watching normal people, you will feel when you watch this show. So all in all, the Netflix miniseries is just so superior. Like it's, I'm obsessed with this show. I, <laughs> am, am I gonna rewatch it? I don't know if I'm ready to rewatch it yet. I think I need to give myself like, I don't know, like a month, maybe longer before I revisit this kind of trauma because it, it, it fucked me up bad. So that is it for me today, you guys. I really hope that you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe and comment down below. Go ahead and let me know what you thought of Netflix's One Day. Let me know how you thought it compared to the movie and the book if you have like watched or read those. If you guys want to find me or follow me anywhere else, all of my links will be down below. I love you all so very dearly and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye!